Hello, everyone. This is Victoria Pilati from the Center for the Women of New York, and uh, we are here today uh, for our second podcast in uh, a series of uh, women's rights, women's advocacy, and women's safety. We have here Susan, who uh, would like to speak about her experience dealing with young girls, and anorexia and bulimia? Well, my experience was um, uh, my daughter. My daughter got sick. And I, in the beginning, I didn't notice. But she start, um she wants to go on a diet. So I help her. I come from a culture, Spanish culture, that you are beautiful if you're skinny. So... Uh, she wants to look better, so I help her to do the diet. But she took this diet into extreme. So she stopped eating, and I don't know what to do. Until one day, I I couldn't, uh, I don't know where to go. I was doing my research, but everybody was, you know, giving you different directions. And uh, they want, for example, they want, do you keep be in the last stage of anorexia in order to take you to the hospital so my daughter just started but I want to stop it right there I don't want to continue so I was doing my research I couldn't find anything and one day at my salon talking with one of my clients I start crying and um, and I and I tell her what happened with me and she used to and she told me like my daughter had anorexia last year so I'm gonna tell you what to do a step by step she was telling me the year before that her daughter was sick. She was telling me that her daughter had stomach problems and she was in the hospital because she had to cancel a lot of my appointments. But she never said that her daughter had anorexia. So when I start crying and telling my problems, she she got me and I do everything she did. So for me, it was perfect. She she told me that where I have to go to have her diagnosed and they start her treatment, and that helped me a lot. Could you tell our listeners, how old was her daughter? Her daughter was 12 years old. And how old was your daughter? 12 years old. Oh, my goodness. Yes. This is shocking to me. Um, Through the years when I learned about this illness, I always thought it was uh, mostly college students when they go away to to dorm at, at colleges. Um, and the pressure of studies, and I just felt that that was the majority, the, the pressure and um, and the age. I, I thought it was that age or older, but to hear 12 years old, this when, is just heartbreaking for me. When you um, can get these problems soon, like they don't pass the, you know, college or... Because as soon as they turn to uh, 18 years old, they can do whatever they want. When my daughter started the program, she first went to a, to a regular doctor, and then that doctor refers me to the program, the way I have five hours of interview. My husband and me, we've been five hours with interview with different doctors, two pediatrics with uh, specialists in anorexia, a social service, nurses, and psychologists. We have interviews with all of them and my daughter too. So they start by uh, giving her uh, an appointment once a week. They have to, you know, when she was talking with a nutritionist also, once a week they were waiting her and uh, seeing if she have a progress or not. The second stage, if, if they still losing weight and they can get sick, like this, the heart can stop and something like that, they put you into two days a week. And if you don't get better in that two days a week, then they take you to the program. You've been admitted at the program, which is six months of Monday through Sunday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And if the, after those six months you don't get better, then you go to the hospital and they put a tube on, on your stomach. So... It's all a process. So if you don't see the signs in the beginning or, or, or let it pass, 
as soon as they turn 18, you cannot do all of these steps because they're going to deny it and they're going to do anything. When I took my daughter, she was crying. She don't want to go. She refuses to go, but I forced her because she was a minor. So I have all the power on my hands to do what I need to do. When we get into, because my daughter went to the, she don't get to put the tubes on, on her stomach to feed her, but when she went to the program of six months from Monday through Sundays, when we went over there, they give us a psychologist talking as of, with family and then with the groups. And in the groups, I see girls of 18 years old in and out of the programs. So it's like a, on those six months, all these girls, 10 girls and one boy, all of them have a different age. And all of the girls who was the, like 15, 14, 16, they got better. But the older ones, uh, till today, my daughter is still talking to them. And she's been telling me, like, Mom, this one went to the hospital again. Because they get in and out of the hospital. So if you don't see the signs, because this can start earlier. I learned so much about this um, anorexia. They start since they are toddlers. Like, if they are picky eaters, if they start getting, like, uh, seeing themselves in the mirror and they don't like themselves, all of the signs are important which I don't knew but since I my daughter have this problem I started doing more research about how to pick those signs and how to treat it before they get worse she got much much better and uh, I still controlling her um, she goes once a year with the pediatrician which is um, specialized in anorexia and do her you know regular checkups and talk about anorexia with her all the time so she's going to have that, you know, for the rest of her life. And how old is she now? She's 16. And so she was admitted to that day program when yes. she was 12. So she's four years of yes. uh, of of having yes. her regular activities back again. And uh, They gave her medication for, how you call, um, she was very anxious. The doctor uh, stopped the medication and she's one year been very well. Wow, so no anxiety, medication. no anxiety medication. She's on her own now. On her own now. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. And I, I think we spoke earlier the importance of of professional help. Mm -hmm. okay. That that these these are medical professionals. Yes. And if you can share how your professor of, of psychology um, yes. helped. During the time that my daughter was, was admitted to the hospital, I take some classes in college. So one of my classes was psychologist too. And my professor, she was a psychiatrist. And uh, one day I need to miss her class and I tell her I need to miss my class because I need to take my daughter to Matters Hospital. And she, was, she knew what Matters Hospital is. So she said, like, what problem she have? So I, I say she have anorexia. She said, all right. So she gave the whole semester. She was talking about anorexia. She was talking about body dysmorphia. She was talking about um, all of this disease to everybody. A lot of people talk in class because you feel like you are in, in therapy. She helped me a lot to go through all of these, you know, problems during the whole semester. Because having a do sick daughter and going to college is not easy, but for me it was like I was I can't wait to go to college to talk to my professor about what happened this week, no? And she always ask questions, and she helps me a lot. I I think our listeners need to really learn the signs because you you have an instinct, you have an instinct yes. for seeing the signs in yeah. changes in behavior, not only in the people you you live with but uh even your clients you know you're yes. just you have an instinct for spotting uh, unusual behaviors so if you could tell our listeners the various behaviors your daughter had and how they dif differ from your client's daughter they they had diff slightly different behaviors yes my daughter's clients she have more uh she started with bulimia she was throwing up and everything she eats she was throwing up so her mother, you know, in the beginning she was thinking, oh, she has stomach problems and, and she can uh, put her foot in the stomach because she's throwing up. So she, that's why she took her to the hospital because her um, 
levels of magnesium was too low, she wasn't eating and she wasn't um, having enough liquids. So she she ended up at, at the hospital. And then the doctors over there was telling her, like, she don't have absolutely nothing wrong, no bacteria, nothing. She is provoking her vomit. So they sent her to the program right away. So she was like, she she skipped all the steps that I went through because her daughter was already at the emergency room with the uh, problems. So it's different ways, yeah. So I, I think if any of our listeners are medical professionals, they need to see these signs and know yes. the, what, what they're seeing because uh, it could be blamed on gastro problems, but uh, it's not. I think everybody with it works with public teachers, um, hairstylists, um, everybody who are with people, they need to have mm-hmm. some, you know, um, studies about anorexia, depression, because my daughter, she had the problem because I, I knew, you know, something's going wrong with her. But when I went to the school and says, I need to uh, take my daughter out of the school for six months, because she was at the school by that time, when I have to uh, tell her to uh, remove my daughter because she has anorexia, I talked to the principal. The principal said, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't notice. So how can you see my daughter every day? And she's been getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And it and, and was very noticeable. My daughter, you know, she looks bones, you know, and, um, and they don't notice. The, the few people I've known that have had anorexia, they look different. You can see the bones in their cheeks. I noticed that. Um, their hands look different. They just, their hands look a, a different type of bonus. It's not, a, it's not a normal weight loss. And the sadness on the face, mm. all of that are signs. But, um, yeah, the school, they don't say absolutely nothing. They don't even call me and say, like, you know what, your daughter lost so much weight or what's going on. Something's wrong. She's depressed. She's nothing. They, uh, when I tell them that I need to remove my daughter for six months is when they, they find out. And it's very sad because what about if I don't find out? What about if I don't see it? You know, and there with my daughter, you know, Monday to Fridays and for more than eight hours. So I... I Everybody should know about this. Everybody should know about this. We should know about depression, and this is maybe a way of uh, expressing your depression. Mm -hmm. So it's all related. It's all related, and um, we can also call it a a form of mental illness. It it needs medical intervention. And in your case, uh, your daughter did use uh, an anxiety um, medication that helped her as well under the supervision of a medical professional. Now, the signs again. Your daughter did not vomit. And uh, you said that was there was a reason for that. Yes, my daughter, she hates to vomit. She is afraid to vomit. She doesn't know how to vomit. So that's the reason why she wasn't bulimic. She started straight with stop eating. Could it be that she had... Uh, a virus source or a flu when she was little and she vomited once and never wanted that to happen again? Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. She vomited one time and she hated it and she don't like it. She feels she's going to, you know, die. I have the same problem too. I don't like to vomit. I, I, I can't. I don't know how to. You also mentioned that she over-exercised. She over-exercised. When she was with a uh, with problem, she, whatever she, if I give her, she push her to eat something, I hear her doing some exercise. She closed the door in her room, and I hear her doing some exercise. So I have to always... That's, that's when I realize that she cannot have the door closed on her bedroom. And she starts walking up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs, and I have to stop her to do all those things. All this, um, she was anxious because she felt like because she was eating one piece of chicken nugget, she's going to gain weight. So she was doing that. And she always, even when she was bones and skin, she see herself fat. That's a body dysmorphia. Yeah, right. So. And I remember you're saying that you had to be trained on how to speak to her. Yes. That 
if you say something like, you don't look fat, they could take it that you really mean that they do. And exactly. anything you say could be wrong. Yes. So can you tell us some of the things that we can't say to someone who has body dysmorphia? What yeah. can't we say and what should we say? Yeah, you, sh you never mention her if they look beautiful or if they don't look beautiful. You, you never talk about their physical uh, appearance. Never. If they ask you, do I look good with this dress? I said, oh my God, so beautiful. That dress is so beautiful. But no, how they look with that dress. You know, that dress is so beautiful. The sparkles or something that they catch your attention with the, the dress. But never talk about their personal, the physical. So rather than say, you look beautiful in that dress, that yes. dress is beautiful. Yes. Because you're feeding into that body yes. dysmorphia yes. by always uh, pointing to their beauty. Yes. Or a lack of it, yes. right? Yeah, because it's difficult. You want to tell your daughter, oh my God, you look amazing with that dress. But they go, right away they go like, oh, uh, no, I am not. I see fat, I see this. I see. They start, you know, you know, you know, punish themselves. Do no, no word you from, from you. You can't use the word you to them yes. because then they will say I, I, I. Exactly. And it's not about their appearance. It's about the dress. If you would like more information on anorexia and bulimia, uh, we will post it on our website, cwny.org. And uh, do remember from Susan that it is very important to see the signs, to find professional medical help, and to be careful what you say and what you don't say. Thank you, and thank you, Susan. I would like to point out the difference between anorexia and bulimia uh, from medical news today. People with anorexia and bulimia may fixate on weight and appearance, and they may have a distorted body image. Both conditions result in a person trying to lose weight using unhealthy strategies. There are key differences between anorexia and bulimia. People with anorexia tend to adopt extreme diets. They may restrict their food intake to a degree that can lead to malnourishment and even death. Some people with anorexia exercise to excess. The primary characteristic of bulimia is episodes of binge eating followed by purging. An episode may involve overeating and later vomiting using laxatives, or administering enemas to get rid of the calories consumed. For more information on eating disorders, please visit nationaleatingdisorders.org. They have a wonderful screening tool that asks questions such as, how much more or less do you feel you worry about your weight and body shape than other people your age? How afraid are you of gaining three pounds? When was the last time you went on a diet? And so on. They also have a helpline, 800-931-2237. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And again, that's 800 800- 9312237 You can also text that same number and um the pilot hours are Monday through Thursday 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. for text messaging and they also have on their website uh a chat feature uh, you can chat Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Do visit nationaleatingdisorders.org. The Medical News Today article, What is the Difference Between Anorexia and Bulimia?, was medically reviewed by Timothy J. Legg, Ph.D., CRNP, and written by Zorn Villines. V-I-L-L-I-N-E-S, on January 13th, 2020.